hello and welcome back and that is right today we will look at this the ds220 plus and i want to help you decide whether it is still worth it right now in summer 2022 today we are looking at this device and i'm going to go through the things that you should like about it maybe things that you shouldn't and hopefully help you decide whether to buy it in a little under five minutes that's right, so this is the DS220 Plus, released in the middle of 2020 and at the time considered basically the easy, safe option for our Synology NASes. There are the value series, your J's, your basics, your real techs, and this is where things get a little bit serious. Now, first and foremost, chances are you'll come to this video because the price tag for this NAS has really done a very good job recently, hasn't it? Originally arriving on the scene at between 250 and 300 nicker, depending on the tax that you are paying. Now, the price tag for this device is getting close to that 200 mark all the time and with prime day black friday seasonal deals and summer deals and all the september stuff on the way it's only going to get better for this bad boy so well, the hardware you're getting for your money is actually pretty darn good. It's a dual-core um, J4025 processor there. It's a 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz embedded graphics processor. And it arrives with 2 gig of DDR4 2666 megahertz memory there. Now, why is that all important? Well, that means that this thing can run DSM 7.1 and pretty much all of the applications. Bear that in mind. That is the enterprise platform from Synology there. And this runs all of the storage and services that the rack mount can run. Yes, there's a little bit less horsepower in there with a, a dual core inside. And yes, that CPU means that virtualization is going to be a little bit hard going on this. But when it comes to Flex Media Server, when it comes to the collaboration suite, when it comes to backups, when it comes to cloud synchronization, and ultimately when it comes to the entire myriad of AAA plus applications from Synology, this little affordable two bay has got it going for you. Moreover, the system being a two bay means you've got your normal RAID support there inside it's not a 2.5 gigabit ethernet system but it is not upgradable in terms of m2 nvmes or an expansion device what you see is what you get which is going to be very very important to understand that as good as this system is it does arrive with a little bit of a glass ceiling there that a number of users may not be completely in love with what it does feature on the back there is link aggregation so you do have two ethernet ports there that those of you that take advantage of um, a smart switch or take advantage of switches that although are unmanaged have a level of link aggregation failover or um, load balancing support inside are able to be able to take advantage of in this system moreover there is still no news at the time of recording of a follow-up to this device right now and until that follow-up comes along this is still probably one of the best value two bays that Synology put out for a very long time although it lacks the expandability of its predecessor the DS218 it more than makes up for it with a much more improved CPU inside and far more capable CPU that over the last few years we have seen extensive guides and um, community work and github development to improve this system both officially and unofficially what am I talking Talking about well do you know with this system you can go ahead and add a five gigabit ethernet adapter to this it's an unofficial expansion with via a little github apk but it is something you can do on this system and when we talk about expandability and we talk about improvements on this system it's also worth remembering that unlike a lot of more modern generation releases in the Synology lineup this system has benefited recently because Synology have changed their compatibility position and a lot of the time when it comes to getting a new Synology NAS there are limited compatibility lists when it comes to hard drives and SSDs there are limited compatibility on certain peripherals that is something that this device does not have in more ways than one. First and foremost, if you look at the compatibility list, all of the WD, Seagate, Exos, Ultrastar, you name it, they are supported by this system. The same goes for SSDs as well. But more than that, this system, whether you buy at the day of launch back in 2020, which would be weird unless you've got a time machine, or you purchase the device now in 2022 in the summer, it's going to arrive with DSM 6.2 inside now dsm 6.2 is not the most modern version of synology's software but it does have regular software patches and updates just like the other versions of Synology software so you're not going to be left in the cold in that score but what you do also have is one a better support of a lot of USB peripheral devices for things like um, network interface upgrades via USB and more on top of that there is improved support of Synology photos inside and by Synology photos I mean photo management with moments on this device because it still has photo station and Synology moments inside things that were removed in Synology's DSM 7 and 7.1 uh, platform there. So thing and object recognition as well as the more 
I would argue, more business-led photo station application. It's still a great NAS, and although it has quite a low glass ceiling compared to some of the others, it's still a very good NAS overall. But thank you so much for watching. This has been, should you still buy the DS220 Plus in 2022? It's a solid little NAS and still very good value, but ultimately, it's up to you how far you want to push your data storage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Click like, subscribe, links in the description, and otherwise, I'll see you next time.